So now we'll move into our discussion on modernity and postmodernity, uh, economic shifts or broad structural changes that also impacted the way we live. So when we look at the way our economic uh, shifts, our economy shifts, we also see some changes in the way we live. We see some changes in culture. So in order for me to, um, I guess, discuss this sufficiently, I'm going to have to use some visuals. So this is why I moved from the audio clip to this video. So what I have here, let me stand up and grab this, is a board, my dry erase board. I don't have my classroom right now because we're teaching online. So I had to uh, invest in one of these. So what you see here are three phases of the economy. We have modernization, which was the decline of agriculture when we were an agrarian society and a rise in industry. And then, so the beginning of the industrial uh, age. And then in the middle, we have modernity. And modernity refers to the industrial age or the age of industrialization or the industrial revolution, whichever way you want to call it, and a rise in manufacturing. So we stop making things by hand and start making things with machines and in factories during the industrial age. Towards the end here, you see postmodernity. Postmodernity is the period that came after industry. So what followed the industrial age? the age of technology, which is the age we're living in now. So what we see is a decline in manufacturing as most of those jobs have went overseas to China, India, and different places like that. And we now see a rise in technology. So this is why technology is one of the most uh, high in demand types of jobs. So during each one of these phases, there were some cultural shifts. The way we live changed. Let's start first talking about Again, what modernity is. So modernity refers to social patterns or culture um, that resulted from industrialization. But before we get to that, remember, we got to touch on modernization, which was the decline of agriculture when we made everything by hand. Um, most people um, worked in the primary sector of the economy. So you were someone that worked in agriculture. You were a farmer, or perhaps a sharecropper before that. African-American people were slaves. You had a handful of skills trades people, and then you did have some professional occupations, but they were small in number. Um, we also see the personal choices expanded because typically during the uh, period of agriculture or at the agricultural age, whatever you were going to be when you grew up, if you grew up because our life expectancy was short, you were typically going to be whatever your parents were. So if your parent was a farmer, you'd be a farmer. If your uh, parent was a um, blacksmith or something of that nature or a miner or a fisher person, that's what you would be. Okay, so we have more choice now because as we move to cities, uh, education became compulsory or mandatory for children between the ages of 5 and 16. During the earlier uh, stages of the Industrial Revolution, children worked in factories, but the laws changed. So as the laws changed, we began to take children out of the factories and put them in school. That's why K through 12 education for the ages of between five and 16, you have to go to school. So in school, you learn to do other things. You don't have to be a farmer. You don't have to be a domestic worker. You can instead be a doctor, a lawyer, teacher, an engineer, an architect. So you have more choice at that time. And then... Um, there's an increase in social diversity. So what we see as we move from farms and small towns into cities is more diversity. During the Great Migration, many African Americans went or fled the South and moved to the North to escape Jim Crow and white racial violence against them. So they moved to the cities. But you also have immigrants coming from other parts of the world pursuing the American dream through uh, industrialization. So a lot of immigrants from Eastern Europe and other places would come, and Western Europe as well, would seize upon the cities and they would work in the factories. So you have more of a diverse landscape or cultural landscape in cities than you had in small towns. And fourth and finally, people began to think about the future and organize their lives around time. Why is that? Because we're living longer. So as a result of us living longer, we start thinking about how we want our lives to play out in the future. So typically, you will see today a young person be asked, or you hear an, a young person being asked, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because there's an, assumption, there's an expectation that you will grow up. So if you were to say, well, I don't know what 
I want to be in life. I'm just going to figure it out as the day goes on. Somebody would say you didn't have a future, that you were rootless or directionless. So they expect you to plan your future because if you look at the average life expectancy in the United States, it's between 75 and 80 years of age, depending on class and race, of course. But given that you're living longer, much longer than you did in, say, the year 1900, there's an expectation that you plan for your future. And that's it for this part of our lecture. So now we'll go back to an audio.